In any case, we've been really busy on the shed. Got some new stuff installed. Lots of wiring done. Ventilation. Uh, the doors here, you'll notice there's a white filling on the bottom and that's actually uh, insulation. Uh, we've also been doing painting on the off chance that we get good weather. And if you open this place up, you'll notice that this is done up with uh, two by fours pocketed with insulation. Uh, these are the strongest, stiffest doors I've ever seen, um, which helps, especially when it comes to how they're secured down uh, with these mag locks here. Uh, the Chinese I bought them from specified 180 kilos of holding force or about 370 pounds. Uh, I don't think they were kidding because when I powered this up and I was slamming my whole body weight against this door and shoving it, I could not get the thing dislodged. Um, so they weren't kidding, really strong locks. So this place is going to be at least when powered properly, uh, no doubt secure against any kind of brute force mechanical entry, at least from this end. Uh, and if you look on the door here, this is part of energy efficiency, but there's foam here. So right now, uh, aside from the fact that the bottoms of the doors aren't perfectly finished, uh, this, these doors are like the most airtight doors I've ever seen as well, um, which is excellent because the idea going for this shed, um, we want it to be uh, minimal maintenance. So if you look along the walls here, all that red wiring is generally low voltage stuff, like for keyless access and my computer systems and whatnot. And there's a lot of it, uh, but that's besides the point. Um, in any case, yeah, so we wired up two banks of outlets in this place, uh, one on each side. Well, you can't see those ones because they're behind the drywall, but one on each side, one bank on each side. There's like three... Uh, outlets on each side plus some on the ceiling for lights and stuff uh, Yeah, so we've been working a lot on ventilation as well install that ventilation down there I have to uh, put a cut a hole in the vapor barrier and whatnot and put in the other end and the uh, filter material which will also prevent uh, drafts and air leakage because it'll require more work to physically push air through and also, uh, up there, that ventilation fan's installed. All the wiring kind of leads centrally into this main box here on that wall. And in there, I'm going to have a, um, a relay module and a computer controlling everything, right? But most of the work we've been doing has been in, in putting in that wiring, mainly the red wiring, and uh, insulation and vapor barrier. All right, um, so there's just a few things I want to talk about. So this insulation, good stuff. Uh, the designer kind of want to center the design of this place around um, uh, energy efficiency. That's an important uh, key aspect of this place. I want it to be as green as possible and as mainly just cheap to maintain as possible. Talking about energy efficiency, so you saw the doors, how well they're insulated. Normal doors are like this thick and they're made out of wood, so they leak a ton of heat energy. Plus they're drafty. Those doors are sealed up properly. Um, the walls are all insulated. This place is um, basically hermetically sealed on the outside with how every, well everything's been caulked and painted. Um, there's essentially no air getting through um, unless we want it to get through. The only air that'll come through here is the stuff we manually pull in and filter, uh, which is good uh, because the filtered stuff is clean, whereas the stuff that comes through cracks in the wall and whatnot probably isn't. This window here, uh, you'll notice it's actually quite large. You uh, can't see it right now, but it goes up to the ceiling. I would say it's probably guessing, just guessing, it's probably around 0.8 square meters or a little less than a square meter. And uh, the funny thing is this window is actually a big part of energy efficiency. Um, now you may be asking, um, Windows aren't as well insulated as a wall, so how does that make the place more energy efficient? Well, good question. Um, this is essentially like a solar heater, right? Uh, so the sun, if I remember correctly, the figure was around a thousand watts per square meter at sea level. So essentially this window is like a, during the day, when the sun's facing it, it's like several hundred, a several hundred watt heater. Um, which will help a lot in heating this place. 
because uh, the calculations are generally as such. Um, it it kind of falls into a range because, of course, I can't uh, account for every factor. But the heat energy required to heat this building um, is probably around anywhere from on the low end 12 watts per degree up to 20 watts per degree and that's in Celsius right so that's based on the watts per meter Kelvin calculations of the insulation uh, the studs etc the windows whatnot uh, not factoring in air leakage because it's basically none but um, should be around 12 to 20 watts per degree so say it's 20 degrees in here zero degrees outside should be anywhere from 240 to 400 watts of energy required to heat this building. Um, this window should be able to provide several hundred watts during the day, so it should account for most, if not all or more, of the heating requirements for this building um, during the colder parts of the year, during the day, which um, incidentally, because of where we are in Canada and where we are inside Canada, um, most of the time, it's going to be colder than we want it to be uh, outside, uh, like for temperature-wise. The only time that's different is during the hot summer months, and then I might consider putting some insulation in front of us, but we'll, we'll see about that just yet. Uh, for, as for the winter, um, this will be a big help. Uh, also, natural lighting. Uh, the quality of natural lighting is unmatched. It's perfect. Anything we produce artificially, um, basically, unless you're talking about some very serious high-end studio lighting, it'll never be as good um, as natural lighting. So natural lighting, of course, it's important to human health, psychology, seeing outside, seeing the sunshine, the sky, etc. It's good for you. Um, but this also, of course, meets energy efficiency requirements. So this place is very um, energy efficient. I was actually looking into heat pumps. Um, the basis of that is essentially that uh, air conditioners, of course, suck heat from the inside, push it outside. Um, most window units will have a COP of around three to four, and what COP is is it's uh, watts of heat per move, uh, watts of heat moved, versus watts input. So, input one watt into a COP four air conditioner, which is like most window units you'll move 4 watts of heat energy to the outside. Uh, but of course, incidentally, this is where it gets interesting, air conditioners technically can work both ways. So that's what a heat pump is, is not only can you pump heat to the outside, but you can pump heat to the inside. So when it's, they, they don't work as well in the cold, which is why they kind of only used in America right now, but as they get more efficient, the latitude at which they've been implemented is kind of creeping up and up. Um, it's the point where it would make sense to install one in our climate, in Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba, Canada. Um, in any case, the COP of that hard installed unit would be around 7 for cooling in the summer, which is pretty damn good, like that's really good. Um, and in the... Um, the winter, the heating uh, COP, which I kind of had to calculate from other units, but whatever, is around uh, generally 3 at 0 degrees C. Of course, it drops as you get colder, uh, but it would, it would make sense to have one in here, except for the fact that the smallest unit I could find would be overkill for this place. This place is less than 100 square feet. Uh, the 9,000 BTU ones, they say, is good for probably three to 400 square feet. So it, it, it would be a significant expense. The cheapest one I could find was around like several hundred Canadian doll hairs. So it'd be a significant expense to heat and cool a not so big but very energy efficient space. So for this task, it doesn't really make sense. Um, but if I was building something bigger, like a garage, I would definitely spring for one of those. Um, in any case, right now we're just using a space heater, but uh, to kind of fill in gaps where the window doesn't obviously, obviously provide all the heat. Uh, but a heat pump would be a good idea, but uh, yeah, so we've got to install some AC down the line. Uh, in any case, yeah, so this window right now, it looks at the wall, but we'll be moving at the whole building eventually, so it, this will either face south or west.
So that'll, of course, south or west in this part of the world is the best spot for solar energy. So that will meet a significant portion of the energy requirements um, for heating during the day, which is also most of the time I'm going to be using it. And I um, just want to talk about kind of like the uh, electronics of this place, uh, which is most of the wiring. So the idea with this is there will be three separate Arduinos or Arduino type things in here. Um, one back here, a couple up front. And you should be, basically, they'll all communicate with each other and you can program whatever function you want into them. It's like say it got to be like night or whatever. Like if I know I'm not going to be in here at, uh, I don't know, 12 to 8, 12 uh, in, at night to 8 in the morning, well, I can program it to just shut off heating for that time. So not wasting energy and en en uh, not wasting any energy for eight hours, right? And then I can have it keep it kind of in a colder state until I actually enter here and then pump on the heat. Um, so there's a lot of functions that can be controlled. The idea is you should be able to walk up to the front. It should recognize your presence and your specific presence uh, via like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or potentially RFID. And it, you press the button, it'll unlock the doors because of course they're electromagnetic locks. You can turn on the lights, um, uh, start managing ventilation. And also, the uh, neat thing is it could also start um, uh, because I'm installing a sound system here, you could also have it uh, play a welcome message or pull up your list of favorite tunes or, you know, whatever. Basically, you can program in any feature you could really imagine. It's a lot more flexible than a standard, say, a house, right? Uh, which is kind of one of my favorite things about this place is because I'm building it uh, essentially to my specifications, I can do whatever I want could do exactly what I want uh, almost so if you have any ideas for functions that I should kind of program into this place put them in the comment section I'll read through them and maybe I'll implement them um, and for film work this is where it gets interesting um, the uh, lighting and sound in here will be better than anything else I have um, like the sound this is already a very quiet place if I clap just disappears just goes once doesn't come back doesn't reflect and if I listen it's generally very quiet in here like if I stop talking it basically the silence is deafening essentially right so that's one of the excellent things about filming in here um, no echoes nothing like that very quiet no outside noise um, when we put up the drywall it might echo a bit more in which case I will be bringing in sound deadening panels so the audio quality in here will be better than anything else I have, essentially. And uh, as for the light quality, a, a lot of traditional shops use fluorescent lighting. Garbage. Garbage. Um, doesn't start well in cold, wears out over time. You know, lights should be something... Oh, oh, and color rendering index, I'll talk about that. But lights should be something you set it, forget it. Has a CRI of generally around 70. LEDs typically around 80 uh, although the better ones you can get can go all the way up to 95 uh, sunlight and incandescent bulbs 100 perfect CRI now what is CRI I'll show you a practical example in some footage but um, if you see like uh, the under fluorescent lighting uh, ignoring brightness and all that stuff the colors the actual colors everything looks uh, dreary dim, kind of just ugly. Under a good quality LED light, or just any LED light actually, um, will do way better than fluorescence, um, you'll notice that the colors look a lot more vibrant. They pop more, and that's how it's supposed to look. See, that's why sunlight's so great. That's why having windows is so great, because the sunlight is the best light um, we have. It doesn't get any better. Um, so generally for filming, um, you want to have the best quality of light you can, which will be usually be some expensive studio stuff, but um, a very close second is LED lighting, good quality shop lighting. And I'm going to be bringing 17,000 lumens, approximately, of lighting into this space, or about 160 watts, 
which isn't a heat well it's a moderate it's a pretty big amount but uh, it's really big considering the size of the space like this is a small area so it'll be a few times brighter than like the legal requirement for an office space an office space where you do lots of reading of like small documents right and you might not realize it at first but like um, when you're working on something uh, you might not even realize that you're straining your eyes but uh, it, it helps a lot whether you kind of realize it immediately or at first or not it's kind of subtle but it helps a lot to have really bright lighting so that's that's another thing is I can design this space to be whatever I want and I'm gonna design it to be excellent for filming so it's kind of like the things I'm excited uh, about for this project and as you can see we're turning through this thing basically um, I'll be like doing some other stuff and in a week I'll have most of this junk moved out of here and it'll be time to make my desk and then move my stuff in here like it's happening so those are some of the things I'm excited about in this space.